Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, The Mystic in the Woods. I'm Kate, and today I thought that we would take a look at the Nameless One Tarot and Oracle. So as I said in my last video, I am switching gears for the rest of August and I'm going to really return to traditional imagery, traditional Rider Waite Smith meanings, kind of all of those types of things um, in my personal practice. So what I thought today we'd do quickly though is talk about the Nameless One Tarot and Oracle because this is the deck that I have been using almost exclusively the last few weeks for me personally. Um, and it is a huge deck with kind of a lot going on. So I thought I'd give you my experiences, my opinions, um, some things to know about the deck, stuff like that. Now, before we get into that, like m my experiences reading with it and things, I thought we'd talk about the deck itself for a minute because it is a physically large deck. There's a lot to it and it is it is a pricey deck. It is definitely an investment deck. I'm also going to talk about, um, you know, buying the big book separately. So... The deck is huge. So the deck, hold on, I have it separated into two pieces here. So the deck is a full 78 card tarot deck and an oracle deck. So you're getting, you're really getting two decks in here. So when you look at the price, yes, expensive deck. It is definitely an investment. However, you are getting a full tarot deck and a full oracle deck. So you're not getting... 78 cards that could do both you're getting both decks now it does come with a smaller like a more traditional guidebook but a good one so you can absolutely use this deck with just the guidebook that comes in the box you don't have to buy the separate book if you don't want to or if it's not within your budget um in the guidebook in the little guidebook that comes in the book in the box you're gonna get full color reproduction and a upright reverse meaning and then the sigil affirmation because each card does have a sigil on it um and so each card comes with a sigil affirmation so like this is the two of swords um two of blades in this deck i consider my situation thoroughly i act with confidence and precision so i have really enjoyed that each of the cards comes with a sigil affirmation um, i have found that to be just like a really nice touch and kind of help you get into those card meanings a little bit more now the deck itself is huge so this is the entire deck it's pretty much a brick you can i have it uh, divided that's why the it the edging looks like that because i have half the deck turned upside down so that is not a fault of the deck that is literally how i have it sitting right this second so this is what it looks like if you have the oracle and the tarot mixed together and you can see these cards are freaking giant so here is um like here's my earthbound oracle just as a example okay these cards are huge the card stock is great the edging is beautiful um the cards are a little too big for me even though I do generally prefer a larger card size because I really like to like look at the imagery on a larger card size this is a little bit too much now I have my deck divided in half roughly in half I have the tarot deck minus the court cards and then I have the court cards mixed in with the Oracle deck. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And the creator does talk about how you different ways to use this deck. You can mix them all together. You can separate them out. I have them separated out because I'm trying to get to know the deck. And there are no card um, titles or keywords on the cards. So having them separated out has been working for me. Once I really know the deck, I may mix them together. I don't know. Now I want to take a minute to talk about the big guidebook. So this is the big guidebook that comes with this deck. It is giant. This is a tome. This is a grimoire. This is a huge, huge book. In it, you get a full page color reproduction of each card. You get all the meanings that came in the smaller book. So we have upright, reversed, and the sigil affirmation. But you also get a full page of correspondences some poetry, you get upright reversed overview, you get the sigil meaning, and then you get a couple pages that go into all of the different symbols on the card. So any animals, any symbols, all the colors, 
everything on the card is there for a reason. This creator has chosen everything on each card with intention. And so in the larger book, it does list all of that out for you and explain all of it. So I have really enjoyed that. I bought the deck and the book separately um, because of the price. I wasn't sure I was going to need or want the book. I personally love it. However, like I said, if it's not in your budget, you can still use this deck with the, uh, the smaller book that comes with the deck. This is still a, a good guidebook. Now, I have them separated out so that they're easier to use because she has done the court cards differently. So we're going to look at some overall imagery here in a second, but she has done the court cards differently. So each one is a mask and each court card corresponds to a specific astrological symbol. So I have been using these mixed into the Oracle deck and I have been reading the court cards as oracles, as the mask of Libra or the mask of Aquarius or the mask of Gemini and bringing it into my readings that way. And this is allowing me, first of all, to get to know these cards because these have been a little bit challenging for me to read, these courts. Um, so it's been allowing me to get to know them. It's also been allowing me to use them as a clarifier um, to know what energy or what, you know, individual is is. Um, what if we're reading an individual or an energy in a reading um, and then these are the oracle cards so the oracle cards again they are all black drawn on them those were not all the court cards that I just showed you those were just a handful um, there's a sigil on each one to bring in a specific energy again all the colors all the symbols all the everything means something but there are no keywords and there are no card titles. So you do really have to get to know these deck, this deck, unless it is one that just, just sparks your intuition, which I'm sure it does for some people. For me, I have to get to know these cards. Um, but as I've been getting to know them, I have found the Oracle deck to be very well done and to bring in a layer of clarity and understanding to the readings. So I have really enjoyed that. So this is kind of how I've been using the Oracle and the Quarks combined. So then I've been using the Tarot deck minus the Court cards as a Tarot deck. Um, again, no card titles, no numbers. So this is Temperance. Here's the Ace of Pentacles. So if you are brand new to Tarot, this is probably going to be a challenging deck to read. The guidebook is phenomenal, but it's going to be a challenging deck. If you're not new to Tarot, you can... Most of these cards, you're going to understand the symbols. Um, what you're going to you're going to be able to tell which card it is based on how this artist has um, created each card, because you can still see the traditional meaning in each of these cards. Um, so, like, here's the Three of Wands. I personally don't love the suit of cups in this deck, not because there's anything wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's not like, I don't love it personally. Um, I do love the suit of wands and I am exceptionally picky about the suit of wands and I do really enjoy that. Um, but mostly I really enjoy the majors in this deck as well. Um, it has a few of my absolute favorite major depictions of all time. So here's a, here's a wands card. See, I, I'm, I really enjoy the wands in this deck. Um, so here's the hermit. Love it. Absolutely love it. Here's the lovers. This is my favorite depiction of the lovers cards to date. Um, and like I said, everything in this card has a meaning. The doves, the colors, the sigil, the tree, the egg, everything has a meaning. Um... This is, I believe, the Five of Wands, but I really just enjoy this card. See, I really enjoy the five, the wands, how she's done the wands. Um, here's the Three of Swords. I believe they're blades in this deck. Two of Wands. Um, so you definitely, like, here's the Two of Pentacles. You definitely get the feel for the traditional meaning um, in how each card is depicted. Here's the Ten of Wands. I love this one. I think this is bit just a really cool take on that. Here's the Magician. Um, and there's just one other card that I really want to find. 
that I should have pulled out ahead of time and, you know, didn't. <laughs> um, just one other card that I want to find that's like my favorite, but this is, uh, I believe this is The Fool. I guess I'd have to double check, but I think this is The Fool, which is very interesting. I like that we have the, the carnivorous plants there. I think that's really interesting. Here it is. This is The Empress. This is, I think, such a badass Empress card. I absolutely love, love this depiction of the Empress. I think that this is, I think this is just fantastic. Like, I love this card. Um, you know, here's Justice. So, so if you're a seasoned reader, you're going to be able to look at most of these, these cards and you're going to, you're going to know which card it is. And you're going to get the feeling in each card. You still get the feeling for the traditional meanings, even though there are no people. Um, it's not solely an animal deck, but there are no people. There are lots of animals to so here. You know, you can really get the idea here of the eight. Um, the closest we have to people are in the courts where we just have these masks, which are challenging to get to know, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so that has been, that's the deck itself. I have found this deck to be very clear, very accurate, um, like exceptionally accurate, um, as I've been reading for myself with it. I have not read for others much with this deck because I'm still really getting to know it. But for myself, I have found this to be an extremely accurate deck. Now, I've been pairing it primarily with the Moon deck um, or just with itself. I haven't done as much pairing as I normally would because I'm still getting to know it and it has its own Oracle deck. Um, but I've been pairing it with the Moon deck, which was actually really surprising to me because this was the second deck I ever, ever bought. Ooh. And... Um, I found it really challenging to get to know and to use and to connect with. Um, so the relationship I have with it now has basically been confined to like monthly reads or as a self-care deck, which it has really been powerful for those two reasons or those two um, um, purposes. However, I somehow paired it with the nameless one this month, kind of on accident. And I have really found that it pairs beautifully, not only aesthetically, um, but the conversations that these two decks have together has really just been very surprising to me. Um, the The moon deck really brings out like a new meaning with in the tarot deck. Like it, it really just kind of brings out this new layer of meaning to the cards. And I just haven't found it personally in my practice to pair all that well with any other tarot deck. Um, just personally. But for some reason, I had all kinds of synchronicities, all kinds of symbols that are showing up in both cards. Um, all kinds of colors that are showing up in both cards and all kinds of synchronicities in the messages. Like I said, bringing out new layers. I just, I was really, really surprised to find that the moon deck paired so well with it. So that was my primary pairing was, was the moon deck and the nameless one with the tarot and its oracle pulled separated out. I did pair it with um, Claire Max Illuminated Earth Oracle as well. This is absolutely my favorite Oracle deck. Um, it brings a level of feeling into my readings for me. And it also helps get right to the point. So I did also pair it with this, but honestly, just not as often because I was so busy pairing it with the Moon deck. But I did find that these two also really paired nicely together. So... Those were kind of my main pairings. I did also pair tarot-wise once or twice with the Spirit Keepers tarot, and I found that these two decks worked really nicely together. Um, I once, and I think that this might be a good pairing, this is the Threads of Fate Weaver, and I think that um, this could be a fun tarot pairing. And in my last video, I was just talking about the Modern Hue tarot, which is a reimagining, a recoloring of the traditional Rider Waite Smith. And I feel like maybe the next time these might pair nicely together to really bring in, um, really bring in the traditional, 
the traditional meanings as well. Um, not that the nameless one doesn't have the traditional meanings worked in, because it does. It is based on the Rider Waite Smith deck, but like I said, there are no people. Um, the symbology is different. The symbolism is different. The colors, all that stuff. So that has been kind of my experience with the nameless one Terran Oracle giant, giant deck, um, investment deck. Remember, you are getting though a full tarot deck and an oracle deck. You're some. I do know there are other decks on the market that kind of call themselves a tarot and oracle, and really it's one deck that could be used either way. This is two separate decks that you can mix together and use together, or you can pull apart and use separately. Um, you can hear my son down there with his dad. And um, the little book, the, well, it's not a little guidebook. Like this is a good, this is a good guidebook. Um, but the smaller guidebook that comes in the box is absolutely one that you can use. And in the back, it does have some spreads, three card draw options, um, four card draw options, a cross, facets of self. So it does have some spreads in here. Um, and it does have information in the beginning about sigils, an introduction to the deck, um, yeah, suggestions were on working with the deck. All that stuff is in the little book. But if you do, if you are somebody who really likes to know the creator's intentions behind everything on the card, like I am, I am one of those people, um, then you may really enjoy the, the full deck. And if you're somebody who's new to reading symbols, you might find that helpful. So like, you know, with the Empress card, all of these symbols are here for a reason. And some of these I automatically recognize and I understand and I know what they bring into the reading. Some of them are a little bit new to me. Um, the sigils are all new. You know, some of the symbols on here don't automatically correspond for me. Um, so the, the, the big deck brings all that in. And the you can kind of see it here where the color changes. These are all the cards. And then this back section has all kinds of um, information, info on, si more information on sigils, more information on like um, correspondence charts for all the cards, astrological correspondences, color correspondences. Um, there's like a long list of animal correspondences. So the back of this book has all kinds of other information in it as well. So I have really enjoyed the bigger book. And you can buy them separately or you can buy them together. So if you're not sure, you can always buy the deck, play with it a little bit, and then decide if you want to invest in the larger book too. So those are kind of my thoughts on this deck. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I am happy to have it as a part of my collection. I am excited to get to know it more over the course of the next however many months and however much time. I am excited to get to know it more. Um, and to start reading for others with it. Because like I said, I have found it to be very clear, very accurate, and very concise as well. Like I have other decks that are maybe like a little bit more chatty. <laughs> um, I have found this to be very clear, very concise. And surprisingly, I found the Moon deck to have really good conversations with it and to pull out even more meanings and new layers of meanings out of the tarot cards. So, I mean, do you have any questions about this deck? Go ahead and let me know. I'd be happy to answer them for you if I can. I'll put the link in the description so that you can find it, her website too, if you'd like. Um, but I have been really pleased with this deck. I have loved how it's read for me. Um, and I am excited to continue to get to know it. I feel like it's a deck that the more I work with it and the bigger, you know, the, the more I work with it and we build a relationship, the deeper the cards are going to go. And I feel like it's probably one of those. I think it's a deck with more staying power than perhaps some of the other decks in my collection have have in them. Um, so I'm excited to continue to work with it. If you want to know more about me, um, you can, you know, all the links in the description below. You can find my Instagram website, everything like that. Um, I do think I have some photos of this on the Instagram page, but if not, that's where I post a lot more photos of, of regular card work and stuff like that. Although I'm going to be if you're watching this in August of 2022, I'm going to be using this deck a lot, the Modern Hue Tarot. But I will be circling back to the Nameless one at some point for sure because I have really enjoyed working with this. So I will see you in the next video and I hope you're having a great day. Bye!